Alright, hey guys, welcome back. Sorry about yesterday not being able to stream, but uh, had some last minute stuff come up at work, and it just, uh, it was a mentally draining day. There was no way I was going to be able to do that well, and uh, time was an issue as well. So, anyway, apologies for that, but we are back today, and uh, we have a special treat today because uh, this last week I bought the, uh, the new Aerosoft CRJ uh, 700-900X. And so, um, we're going to try flying it today. I have flown it uh, like once or twice, uh, nothing nothing serious, more than like taking it up in the air and just kind of feeling how it handles and then putting it back on the deck. So, um, uh, even procedurally for this aircraft, I've only gone through the checklist part way and like once. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to do it together and try and actually do a, a full-on flight. Um, but... Uh, in the nature of the fact that uh, I haven't flown this before, we're not doing it with passengers. This is going to be a, more of a ferry flight um, for uh, me learning the aircraft. So uh, we wanted to worry about the fact that we're trying to carry souls and uh, I'm going to kill them all. Uh, at the most, I will only kill me and, and all of you fine people that are joining me. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, say hello to people since it's been a week and uh, uh, we need to say hi to people. So Tyson Harris, hello to you, sir. Future World Gamer, good to see you. Cloud Surfer, hello. Quentin Conreal, Conniel, sorry, um, hello. Tim, of course, is back with us. Wonderful to see you, sir. Uh, Vladi GD, good to see you. By the way, um, you said, why can't you donate? I don't know why, because uh, there's two ways you can donate. You can use Super Chat or you can use the... Uh, uh, PayPal option that the link is in the description of the video. So either one of those two, you are free to donate. I would uh, welcome you to. In fact, uh, your donations, guys, is what uh, helped buy this aircraft. So uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, Zachary, good to see you, sir. Joanne, good to see you. Roger Jose Zales, wonderful to see you. Um, be day on September 9th. Oh, well, happy birthday to you, sir. Or late birthday, I guess, but uh, happy birthday anyway. Uh, TSZ uh, Robloxian, good to see you, sir. Hello. Minimums, how's it going? Flaming Chris, good to see you back. Clorox Bleach, how's it going? The Flight Sim Deck, hey, hey man. Welcome to see you. Good to see you. But congrats, by the way, on your uh, 5,000 uh, subscribers. I'm, I'm happy to see you here, too. So, um, let's see. Flaming Chris, we said hello to you. Who else we got? Uh, let's see. Billy M, good to see you. Octopus Aviation, hello. Tom Munley, good to see you. Uh, I don't know when I'm flying back to the U.S. We're going to be in Europe for a while, so uh, that's just the way it is. That's the way it goes. So, um, Also, big news, uh, this is CRJ700X, obviously, by Aerosoft, but it's also in P3D. Um, so we're using some... So I'm getting used to a new sim, I'm getting used to a new aircraft. It's going to be an interesting day. Um, so anyway... Happy to see you all. So let's uh, let's go ahead. First of all, I'm just gonna let's explore this beautiful aircraft because uh, it's uh, deserving of it. Uh, let's see here. That, that's okay. So I'm getting used to new controls here. So uh, this is a chase plane, by the way. So no longer easy dock. So uh, chase plane, new sim, new camera system, new plane, new lots of everything. Uh, Active Sky 2016 for P3D is on here. It is clear skies actually in reality here in. Uh, Budapest, so uh, it's not the weather injection is not working, it's that it is clear. Um, so we got the uh, beautiful air stairs there. This is the uh, hop livery for Air France, kind of like their little uh, uh, shuttle service, uh, express service, whatever. Um, this is the 700, the, the Aerosoft comes with the 700 and the 900. The 900 is a stretch version basically of this aircraft, it's got uh, slightly different looking engines on the back, um, but uh, essentially a very similar aircraft. Flight deck's the same. So. Uh, but yeah, so it's a, it's a small little aircraft. This is a regional jet. This is for uh, short little hops um, around uh, around localities. So uh, this this aircraft isn't designed to do more than a couple hours at max, or, ma or more than a few hours at max, really, um, and uh, not carry that all that many people. But it's a fun little aircraft. It's uh, basically like a big Learjet, <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. So anyway... Uh, good times. We got our GPU here uh, hooked up. I did. I was able to last minute. I, I thought, let me see if my GSX service works for P3D with the new version, and it does. So I have GSX for P3D as well. So uh, that's awesome. And uh, we'll see what's going on here. So let's get into the cockpit here and see what uh, what's doing. All right. So here is the uh, flight deck of the CRJ700X. Uh, as you can see, the overhead panel is uh, relatively simple. Uh, compared to uh, some of the bigger jets. Um, we've got the uh, pedestal down here and then all of our screens. Everything's off because uh, we have power, but I haven't powered it up yet. I want to do that with you guys. So um, We'll see what this all looks like here in a second. Also, this is kind of a cool feature. They have these uh, tablets here that they call Dave, 
which is an acronym, I think, actually, or they just named it Dave. Yeah, it's, it, so yeah. Um, but this gives you all kinds of, in fact, I can do this for you, little, little thing I created. Um, so you have your checklist here, which is kind of cool. I also have them on my, on my own tablet, so uh, we don't need to use it this way. Uh, you set your payload and fuel and stuff here, which we'll mess with in a second. Uh, v speeds, it'll give you, based on all that information that you set, it'll give you your V speed readouts because it's not in the FMS. Um, let's see here. Under options, you can set everything from pounds, kilograms, millibars, uh, inches, Celsius, Fahrenheit, all these, all these fun little things um, you can do there. And then ground services, this is where we get our uh, wheel chocks on, we can get our uh, ground power on, ground air on. I didn't worry about ground air today because we're not carrying passengers, so we can live without it. Um, the uh, ADG, the auxiliary uh, drive generator. Um, the two uh, IDGs, which is the um, generators to connect to the engine. You can disconnect these on the aircraft, but they have to be reconnected by maintenance on the ground, so this is how you reconnect them if you have to disconnect them for some reason. And then passenger oxygen masks. Um, let's see, and then brake temperature resets. I still haven't found out where I see the brake temperatures. I was looking for them the other day. Uh, but I'm not sure where I actually see what those are. Uh, we can do our doors all up here. You can uh, put the stair railings up in the case that you're using just the regular air stairs. And um, Dave's not here. And uh, <laughs> and uh, you can put the, uh, the, the uh, railings down so you can still connect the jetway with the, uh, with the deck, with the uh, door. So very realistic in that sense, which is cool. And then aircraft state. So for those of you who always wonder how I set up these things cold and dark, in this case, this is how you do it for this one. So you can start cold and dark, ready for engine start, turn around, ready for taxi. I was not able to figure out how to uh, set this up to default to one of these. Um, so I just saved this and because I had to restart and do some things. But um, So yeah. Well, it looks like a Bombardier because it's made by Bombardier. So there you go. <laughs> that would explain why it looks like that. I'm going to turn Dave off. Uh, they actually mentioned in the uh, in the, com uh, the comments of the manual that they uh, were not allowed to name it the HAL 9000, which uh, that's why they called it Dave. It's a reference to 2001: a Space Odyssey for those of you who've seen that movie. For all you youngsters that have probably never even heard of that movie, let alone seen it, um, yeah. If you want a, a really weird kind of depiction of what they thought the future would be like, go check it out. <laughs> Future that ended up being nothing like that, and weird monoliths for some reason. You know, things, things strange. All right, uh, let's see. <laughs> All right, let's get power in this aircraft. So to do that, we've got our uh, ground power hooked up. So we're going to turn our battery switch on first of all. DC service select on, and then I'm going to push that to activate ground power. So that's going to boot up our uh, instruments. So now our flight deck is live. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, master cautious warnings because we don't need them running around like crazy for no reason. Um, all right, I'm not, yeah, we don't need the fuel pumps on, so I'm going to, oops, oh, here it is, oh, all right, so that's off, I that was on, my bad, okay, let's, let's actually get a better look at this and see what's going on here, uh, that's, uh, okay, blah, 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 okay, so here's the setup of the panel here, so you have your electrical panel here, generator switches, APU switches, uh, APU control is actually right over here, it took me a while to find that. Um, fire detection, uh, monitor and test, um, hydraulic um, uh, connections, uh, external lights, nav, beacon, strobe, logo, wing, uh, hydraulic, these are actually the hydraulic switches to turn on and off the hydraulic systems. Um, so right now those are all off. Um, up here we have our engine start section, so this is the uh, start switches and then the stop switches. And then continuous ignition here, APU switches. Um, this is actually the start stop switch here. This is a uh, power and fuel it's more of a readout. Um, bleed air right here, and then uh, the boost pumps for fuel, fuel pumps basically. Cabin pressure panel, air conditioning panel, anti ice panel, which includes the, um, the windshield heats, probe heats, and then the wing and cal anti ice. So it's a little, but sometimes they split this up and these are separate, but uh, it's all in the anti ice section here. Miscellaneous lights, dome light, and Stand by computer or something because I don't know. Stand by compass probably did that actually. Um, <laughs> passenger signs, emergency lights. This is not, uh, this is here, but it's not modeled. It's, uh, I forget what it actually is. Let's see if I can see. Uh, what does it say? All flight. It says flight. I don't know. It's not modeled, whatever it is. It, it may move, but I don't know. 
Taxi light, landing lights. Uh, please, Moose, what are you, uh, what are you doing? Please check my new video. You are done. Oh, okay. You got a flame, Chris. All right, anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, down here, we've got our, uh, this is pretty standard for both jets. You've got your PFD, your uh, MFD, which is the multi-flight display, and then your two ICAST displays, same thing on the uh, first officer side. The uh, flight computer, the FMS, FMC, whatever you want to call this thing, MCDU, I think is what they call it. Yeah, MCDU. Um, gear handle, a uh, number of little uh, controls, anti-skid, things like that. Um, these, this is interesting, uh, thrust reversers, uh, you have to arm them to... Uh, uh, reverse thrust, I guess, which is interesting. And then the ground spoiler arming for when it uh, deploys automatically. Um, thrust levers, which are actually, interesting enough, if you see here, um, this is in a, um, uh, a shutoff mode. And then you have idle up here, and then you have cruise, attack, uh, toga, and uh, max power. Sorry, climb toga and max power. So, uh, kind of similar to the Airbus in that sense, once you get up in the higher bands, it'll actually set power for you with a detent, a click. Uh, these are actually locked in a position right now, like I can move the thrust levers, which I just did, nothing happened. Um, so I'm going to have to unlock these in order to fly, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, flaps, right there. And then moving on down, we have our uh, radios, uh, radio controls, uh, like uh, for like my mic and stuff, which is you know, somewhat simulated. Um, weather radar. Uh, this, I'm, this system, something to do with the FMS, something or other, I'm not entirely sure on this one yet. Uh, mock and stab trim. Uh, these are the uh, IRS align. Uh, sorry, no, these are. This is the. Uh, what is this? That's a new question. Yeah. Gotta learn how to move around better in the cockpit. <laughs> uh, display fan, avion. Oh, these are fans. Okay, I'm sorry. Fans, and then your uh, IRS switches here. Park them right there. Uh, more. Um, radio controls. This is for the uh, flight instrument uh, selectors, so where it gets its data from. So where your heading indicator gets it from, air data display, connector to ICAST, you know, what the computer is getting. Chimes, yaw damper, more lighting, trims for uh, aileron and rudder. Uh, these are the ICAST uh, display switches, so they'll change what I'm seeing on these, uh, these screens up here. Uh, same thing, radio, weather, um, this guy, what is this guy? This is a f uh, flight summer rudder. I don't remember what this guy does either. <laughs> There's some things I don't know in this aircraft yet, so that's fine. Uh, cargo fire uh, stuff, and then um, ADG control, which is the, um, the emergency um, little ram air thing to if our engines go out and die. And then emergency flap controls here, and emergency gear extension here. So, um, I'm going to have to figure out how to turn these things off. This is um, Active Sky 2016 that's coming in and telling me that it's, uh, we just updated your weather, and you don't have a flight plan, so do that. I, I, don't, don't tell me these things. Just, just do things in the background. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, okay. Anyway. The times the streams come out. I don't know what that hide, okay? It's very random. Okay, sorry. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to bring up the uh, the checklist here on my screen because it'll be easier to see it that way for me than to try and look at Dave. So that way we can try and get going here. And uh, actually, you know what? Before I do that, let's go ahead and do a flight plan because we need to do that. So I'm going to do that together. We have not done that yet. I mean, I haven't done it yet. We. Uh, let's go over here. So if you look at Nightbot, it's going to tell you all the stuff to, to be determined. So let's open up SimBrief, and we'll go down here to Dispatch, Create New Flight Plan, and here we go. All right, so I don't really know what uh, 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 HOP is as far as their call sign, so I'm just going to, because it's three letters, <laughs> I'm going to do it that way. And we're going to be HOP1, just because it's a ferry flight, I don't care. Uh, let's see, LHBP is Budapest, where we're at. We're going to LIPZ, Lima, India, Papa, Zulu, which is uh, Venice, Marco Polo. And we are flying, let's see if it's got this thing in here. CRJ700, look at that, there we go. 
Beautiful. Uh, I don't think I'm going to mess with any of that, so that's fine. Manual route planning required. Oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is this, then? Let's see what that says. Does that take me from Budapest? It does. Okay. Well, there. Oh, screw that. No, what's up with that nonsense, but okay. Um... Passengers is going to be zero today. Cargo, we're going to take some cargo just so we have some weight on the aircraft. So um, let's, uh, let's say 4,000 pounds. i got to check that and make sure I can actually carry that before I finalize that. So um, Yeah, you'll notice in the, uh, in the Nightbot is not going to know the route because we're setting it up right now. I haven't done that yet. So once we get that all set, I'll put that in there. Um, let me check that actually then while we're at it and see if we can do... 4,000 pounds of cargo, because that would be good to know. Payloads. So we're going to do zero passengers, because we're not hauling anybody today. Uh, oh. Apparently it's defaulted back. I had it set to uh, pounds, because that's how I like to do it. We are in Europe, so I'll leave that as another bar, so everything is going to the same. Pounds, let's see. Oh, it's because our fuel is zero fuel weight. Yeah, stand by. Okay. I know we're overweight. Let's see how high I might go and then take the fuel off and we'll see what it does. So I'm not going to need nearly all this fuel. Yeah, okay, there we go. So let's just, for the sake of science here, let's. <laughs> Set that because it's going to then update that and that would be nice. It doesn't like that at all. Um, okay. Let's tone that down a little bit and see what happens. Okay, I can do that. So we'll do 3,000 pounds of cargo. And there we go. Okay. Back to the flight planning. Alright. Odin Bull, how's it going, sir? Uh, this is P3D, Phoenix is your gaming. You do not do you not recognize P3D when you see it? Oops, that's not what I meant. See that the menus here? That's not FSX. This is P3D. P3D. So yeah. Actually I tried installing the uh, the CRJ on FSX Steam and it installs, but oh my goodness, it is not frame rate friendly in in FSX. Not at all. I mean the PMDG 747 version 3 is more friendly than that thing. I, I don't understand. It's actually fine on the ground. It's once you get in flight, it's just like, it was like six frames per second. I couldn't fly that way. I was like, all right, screw this. I'm going to see how it does in P3D. And it was so much better in P3D. So it's clearly more designed for that. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, all right, so that's going to be 3,000 pounds of cargo on the second thought. And then we've got our route there. We definitely don't need E-tops, and we don't need step climbs. We're not going nearly that far. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to copy this right now, because that'll be easier to give to the night bot. And let's generate the OFP. And I don't want that in my face. Okay. Uh, it, I updated the thing to say uh, P3D. Where does it say FSX Box Edition? On mine it says Lockheed Martin prepared 3D V4. Does it say it in the in the description of the... Oh, no. No. I wonder if it's... Uh, yeah, no. Where is... Yeah, where is it saying... Text my videos, explain what I want to do. Okay, so yeah, maybe that's something YouTube did automatically. Because there's a section where I can set the category for gaming and then tell it what the game is. And, um... Um... What the crap? Uh, Quentin Conreal, I'm not even going to answer that. That's just weird. Like, this isn't that kind of channel. <laughs> We're not even going there. Um... Alright, anyway. That's... Yeah. Okay. Anyway... Let's go ahead and activate that. See a route map because I like that. That's cool. 
All right, so what's it giving us for our... Oh, I didn't set any of our zero fuel weight stuff. Oh, well. Uh, cruise... Ooh, we're going to go high today. Cruise level 40,000 feet. Uh, block fuel is 87.75, so let's go ahead and set that real quick. On Dave. He's actually pretty close to that. 87... Call it 81 because that'll be close enough. It's a little bit more. Set payload and fuel. Let's make sure it still likes our. Oh, are you kidding me? Can you not balance things? There is. You can put cargo on one end of the other. Like, this is what's annoying about this payload guy is I can load payload into either one of the front or back cargo hatches somewhere, but I can't do it through this. Which is odd. Let's see if I give it a little bit more fuel of what it will do. So it makes it better. There we go, okay. So we just added a little bit extra fuel and now it's okay with our center gravity. <laughs> Alright. Hot airplane, how's it going, man? And Ronan, good to see you, man. Okay, so that's all set up now. Let's go ahead and copy that over to the Nightbot for you guys, because I know you guys want to be able to see that. So we'll do that. Route edit right there paste to get some nightbot behind the scenes action right here 400 submit back to sim brief and we're gonna move that over there now all right uh, I am 34 not that has any bearing on your previous question but uh, yeah <laughs> let's go ahead and get the uh, checklist up now that I was talking about because I wanted to get that First, so that way I can see what we need to do here. So I can open up my Google Drive with my checklist on it. CRJ. And CRJ, there you are. And normal checklist. Alright, load up. Okay, so circuit breakers are not really modeled, so they're closed, that's fine. Uh, nose wheel steering switch needs to be off, which is right there. Uh, hydraulic pumps are all off, I believe. Yes, they are. Uh, landing gear lever is down, and the lights are green. Flight spoiler is set to zero. Slats and flaps lever is uh, set to zero, which is uh, what it agrees with. Ground. Radar is off, which is down there. Um, ADG manual release is stowed. That is correct. Uh, emergency flap switch is in normal mode. Yes, it is. Battery master switch is on. It's, it's right there. And let's see, APU, AC electronics is required. So we're not using the APU at the moment, but we have the uh, ground uh, card, so that's fine. IRS needs to go to nav, so that's all the way down here. We're going to switch those over to nav mode. Let's start aligning. Emergency equipment, check. That's uh, more just like for funsies. Gear and safety pins, we're going to say they're on board. <laughs> uh, airplane documents, uh, yeah, sure. Hydraulic 3A pump as required, so we're gonna, I don't think we need that at the moment to do anything, so we'll leave it. Um, FMS, eh, FMS initialization complete. So let's go ahead and initialize the FMS. So I'm going to go here, status, and position init. And we're going to set our current position right there. And our airport is LHBP. So we're going to set that there. And head over to flight plan. We'll go ahead and put this in. And you know what? No, I'm. Well, I did this last night, I put it in, I powered up the airplane the rest of the way, and then my flight plan was gone. I'm going to put it in, but I'm a little hesitant to see if it kills it again. So LHBP, which just makes me nervous. Uh, LIPZ, right? Yeah. PZ. Go. There you go. And our alter, of course, maybe that was with, I'm trying to think if that was on FSX or if that was in prepared. I think that might have been an FSX, so maybe you won't do it. Who knows? Um, I don't know. Is there an alternate? I don't even know. I've got to look at that. Alternate. Where are you at? Why are you down low? There you go. Okay. Alternate is L I R F. Okay. L I R F. Which I think that is. I think that's Rome, right? Uh, Rome, Fuchia, Fuchimalo, whatever it's called. That's my guess. 
Every once in a while, that's another little quirk I notice. And click the mouse, sometimes it holds it down like that. Even though you let go of the mouse, you have to like click it again. It's kind of weird. So if you know if you have this aircraft and you're having trouble with things, just know, be aware of that. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. But you're supposed to be able to set this up before you. So I, I'm yeah, it's very possible. Maybe I uh, if I if maybe I clicked a power button wrong, and so I did lose complete power for a moment instead of switching over cleanly. Uh, no girlfriend at the moment. That's neither here nor there, but yeah, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> um, hot airplane, you had a biking accident. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're, uh, I mean, you're at least moderately okay because you're on here, but I hope you're not in too much pain. That sounds like uh, not fun. Hopefully you weren't hit by a car. <laughs> uh, okay, so now to do the flight plan, we're going to go departure and arrival. Departure. And our departure is the... Uh, do that. There we go. Is the uh, Pust 3D. Pust 3 Delta. So, next page. This threw me off, too. You have these up and downs, that does nothing. It's all about the next page, previous page. I don't know where you use these at. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who's the 3D? There we go. And we are, you know what? Everyone left or right? Or right. Uh, let's go with. Uh, let's go with left. That's going to be better for us. Uh, let's see, go back to the flight plan. And we're still good. So, next page. So, from there, we're going to uh, DIMLO. DIMLO. That's just direct. And then direct to Riffin, R I F E. R I F E N. R I F E N. And from there, uh, via Mike 196. Oops, as I don't put enough. Oh, good, that actually works my mouth. Dang it. So you did that stupid, like, hold down the thing again. To Akado, A K A D O. A K A D O. And then direct to Laren, L A R E N. R E N. And then that's the arrival. So we're going back here to departure arrival, arrival, and we want the uh, left U to Bravo. Transition should be further down. I found it not. I think it'd be Laren. Why would that's interesting. Why is Laren not one of the options? Huh. Usually when they call that it's the okay, well then let's look at the uh, <laughs> let's look at the flight plan, see what our transition is supposed to be, because that's odd. Uh, let's see here. Arrival and stars. up for me here. That's why it's not there. It's got me the. Uh, there is a Laren arrival. Okay. So I don't see any of these points. 
points on here that these chips and charts are failing me at the moment. Well, I'm going to just say screw that and I'm just going to go over here. <laughs> Make it work. So we'll execute that. And we'll go over here legs because I'm sure we'll have some kind of issue over here. Yep, there we go. Nice. And we'll execute that. Said execute. So, our passengers are zero, because we don't have any passengers, so that's nice. And then our cargo, we did say we have 3,000. And fuel, can I see that? It's like 8811, I think. I cannot trust myself. 8811, okay. I should have trusted myself. Wait. 8811. Go in there. Okay, cruise altitude is 4, and it wants you to type the whole thing in apparently. I tried doing it in 3 years. That's too many. <laughs> Not 400,000 feet. Little above the ceiling for this guy. Okay, and we'll execute that. Wonderful. VNAV, uh, let's see, what is. Uh, say it's six. I thought it was, it may, actually, you know what, no, it was uh, ATC discretion. So I'm going to call it six, because that's a good European transition. <laughs> Next cute. Next we go to legs. All right. Okay, so the flight plan's in. Let's go back to our uh, checklist here and finish that up. Uh, we're going to say we already did the walk around and uh, resume check. Let's see, why are you. Yeah. Alright, so seat adjustment, pretty stinking close. The way these things work, you're supposed to cover up the gold ball with the white ball there, so it's uh, pretty good there, actually. Uh, we need to check our oxygen, which is right here. That as well. That sounds good. Uh, let's see here. There's some other panels here that, uh, like a number of tests and things, which I'm not exactly sure how to accomplish them yet, so I'm not going to really worry about them. We're more focused on flying the thing and making sure we can do that, so these are more um, just for you know, immersion, so I'm not going to worry about too much about these other than the fact that we know we're running. Uh, let's see, so moving on, moving on, moving on. I'm just going to kind of check and see if there's anything. If we do need to arm the emergency lights, Lights are armed. Standby compass is up there. Yes, stall to save on that. Okay, it's already off. Clocks. It's a yaw, yeah, yaw damper. You can do a gauge, which basically just push these guys in to turn that on. And then also the uh, mock trim, which takes a second, I think, to go off. May also not let us do that until we start the engine. Not sure. <laughs> uh, just remember that from yesterday. Sort of select is normal. That's fine. Okay. So before start check. So let's go ahead and close your doors. Let's go back over here to doors. And I'm gonna close all the doors. And ground services. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it on. Go ahead and remove the wheel chocks. Actually, I'm not going to do that because that might take away my thing and I don't want to do that until I get the APU started. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start the APU. Sounds like Vader. That's good. Alright, so to start the APU, I believe we just need to hold this guy. It doesn't look like you know, the button is pushed. From an angle, you can see it pushed. From here, it doesn't. 
good in the moment light up when you start playing. That's what it did for me the other day. That is the right button. <laughs> There's only two buttons. The left button, yeah, okay. <laughs> Alright, let me try holding that one for a moment, see if that kicks on. Because I thought when I hit this the other day, I got a light on one of these and then the other one. See, I push it, nothing's happening there either. And then if I push that. I did switch to P3D, not win. You know, the other right, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I've done the left button and the right button, I've done the right button and the left button, and, and neither one of those is working now, so I'm not sure what the heck's going on. What did I do yesterday? Because this worked for me yesterday. Kramer, how's it going, man? Okay, let's. I'm going to do this, because that way I can actually see if they're being depressed, because I can't tell. There, that is okay. Power. See, that was not doing jack. Oh, there we go. Right click. Aha. Okay, that's. What it took. You gotta hold right click on this guy. Aha. Ha. Must have done that inadvertently. I'll hold that until it fires. I'm assuming I will get an available here in a second or something. Let's see if I have any APU indication on the ICAS. APU LCD is open. Uh, electrics. APU gen green. Okay, here we go. Yep. Bingo. Bingo! Yep, there we go. There's available. Okay, so now the... Uh, the uh, external power is is now not connected anymore. So now let's go ahead and kill the external uh, ground power off. The flight plane's still there. Yes, <laughs> good. <laughs> and we'll turn the wheel shocks off at this point too. Okay, good. All right. So now we have the APU, and we're going to go with. Um, so we do need to make sure, let's make sure the bleed air stuff, uh, I don't want the packs on yet because we're going to start the engines right now, so bleed air is on auto, so that should be good. So we should be good to start engines here in a second. Let's go ahead and make sure the nav lights are on. I'm going to turn the beacon light on at this point as well. Uh, boost pumps should be on before starting, so there, those go on. Uh, altimeters... Doing kind of a abbreviated version. Uh, the FMS and the IRSs are set. Radios and uh, take up briefing. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay. APU on. Papers on. Take up data. Doors. Oh, we need to set those V speeds. That's right. You got to do that. You do that through here, by the way. So under V speeds, we go over here and we do set, 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 set takeoff flaps eight. And so that gives our V speeds over here on our, our thing. So V1 is 127, VR 128, V2 138, and VT is a 188, which, uh, you yeah, know, whatever. Um, and so let's set for our speed purposes. Speed selectors 148, don't set it, set it for us. V2 plus 10, nice. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Uh, altitude, what is this set to? Oh, okay, 10,000, that's fine. I like that it doesn't read it out somewhere, though. That's not cool. It probably does somewhere, I just don't know where. And why is that zoomed so far out? Can we zoom that in? Those my controls for that. That's over here. Okay. Oops. Nope. Down. Actually, move that out of the way. Uh, let's see. I think that's over here, anyway. Maybe not. Format range. Yep, there. 
we go. Let's make that. Yeah, let's make it five so I can see. Okay. Uh, parking brake set, hydraulics to on. start. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the engine. So to do that, um, I'll show you how that thing works in a second here. So we're going to go over here to the start switch, and we're going to click and start on uh, the right engine. And I need to be able to see the controls here. So there's N2. We're going to hits around 20. that lock and nudge the thruster to idle. And that will inject fuel and there it comes. Coming on up. Watch the end one come up to its uh, stable condition here. It's just plays. How's it going, man? It's, uh, it's an interesting day. I don't I speak that. <laughs> And okay, so right engine up. Let's go ahead and start number one. Same thing. We're watching for N2 here. You get around 20, and then we will unlock and uh, put the uh, thruster up to idle. There's 20 there. So bloop and nudge. We got a good start, number two. Billy M, why are you sad? Or or why am I sad? Maybe is what you're referring to. That goes less well for me. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. It's been a busy week, but uh, I'm doing good. Doing good. Okay, so that's coming up. Let's make sure we get those generators on so I don't lose power when I disconnect the APU. Generators are on, we can go ahead and turn the packs on at this point. Turn the fan on. And I'll the light go on, I guess. And then we're gonna go ahead and stop the APU, which I guess does that. So there we go. Let's make sure our flight plan is still there. Hey, it is. Look at that. What do you know? Well you know what do you say? We say we know. Uh, too far. Go away. All right, so after start, fuel feed, check valve, first flight, oh, that's fine, first flight, okay, so I guess those are all good to go. General 1s and 2s are auto, bleed valves are on, any ice, uh, we need to turn the window heats on, which are these guys. Billy, do you mind? <laughs> that's annoying. Okay. <laughs> um, and probe, go on, on here. Okay, electrics check rudder, check nose wheel gear steering armed. So we're going to now arm that, and we're ready to get pushed back. So let's go ahead and call for that from our trusty G to GSX leave. What the heck? Where did that happen? They were here. Did I lose it? I lost it. That must have failed. All right, well, all right, we'll do a faux pushback, <laughs> the old-fashioned way. Shift P. <laughs> when in doubt, shift P. Grief. Good grief. Yep, just when you, as soon as you start streaming, that's when everything breaks. That's, that's how it works. That's how it works. It's got to roll with the punches. Uh, no, there is one. One, one ditched us. <laughs> it was all here. You saw it. It was here when I started up. And then in the course of doing my checks and setups, it, it's all gone. And I can't even 
hitting control F12 doesn't even bring up the menu, so something clearly failed. Uh, no, actually, it's not an old school plane. This is uh, this is very much newer technology. It is a, um, in some ways, a little more simplified because it's a regional jet, not because it's uh, older or newer. I'm just going to put that part right back on because we're going to start to fall forward. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it usually I actually have never had a problem with it. Um, we had one issue with uh, we. This is where the guy's name came from. The, they're talking about Juan in there. Um, we flew an MD-11 from LAX to Memphis, and I had I actually started outside the cockpit and, and called the guy, the pushback driver, Juan, just off the top of my head. And he ended up almost pushing us onto the runway. It was hilarious. <laughs> he's a little early for Oktoberfest. I don't know. Uh, unless he's getting an early start. So mock and stab trim. Yeah, okay, so that didn't uh, get your most set. Oh, that's why. Okay, there we go. I didn't get those before. Okay, so those are all set. Uh, flaps we need to go down to 8, which is the setting we're supposed to have. Our trim that it gave us was, I think, 6 point something rather. Not that. Payload. Ah, nope. Wrong button. Wrong button. Wrong button. Sorry, Dave. Uh, 7. Oh. That's really hard to see. 7.0. So, one of these has my stab trim number on it. There it is. 7.0. Oops, 6.0. There we go. Actually, I think we'll leave that there because I have that one there already, so that's better. Okay, flaps 8, trim set, thrust reversers need to be armed. So we'll arm those guys. And flight instruments are checked. Put the mask on to brake temp check. The guys. I still don't know where to check the brakes at. <laughs> Really, Flight Sim Deck. Flight Sim Deck, are you, uh, or Patrick, as your uh, actual name is from your stream, are you a uh, California guy? I kind of assume because you do a lot of Sacramento flights. <laughs> Drive that tug to Munich, exactly. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Okay, so we are. It's not very helpful. Where is our. Oh, okay, there we go. We're facing roughly north. I'll bring up my, uh, that's Venice, that's not what I want, so I need, uh, me back to my airport. So the LH, uh, no, yeah. Stein's ready. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So, are you from the Sacramento area? Because that's uh, I'm I'm down in Fresno, so I'm just down about three hours from there. If that's where you're at. Guess slow to that. Please and thank you. That's no. That's no. Oh, shoot. Where are you? No. Are you trying to load? Go back to. They upgraded Navigraph's app, and I can't navigate in it now. It's really annoying. LHBP. Go find that. Would you please? It's also a lot slower, too, which is annoying. There you go. Budapest. Go, go, gadget. Burn all our fuel to sit on the ground. Me trying to load up a map. <laughs> oh, they're out there too. I didn't know that. Yeah, I met those guys at uh, Flight SimCon. Good guys. So that's a fun aircraft to fly too. Uh, let's see. Taxi. Finally, give me that. Okay. Now yeah, maybe I can figure out where I am. Okay. If we're Possibly facing north. Okay. This will be interesting. No idea where I am. <laughs> uh, I want to say, oh, Texas 
lights bright, okay. Goodness. Let's see, what is this? Come on, forward please. Power. Being a light aircraft, so I'm sure it's. Uh, my favorite aircraft is 747. It's Uniform and Romeo, which does not jive with anything on my chart. <laughs> of course not. So that's helpful. Okay, there is a runway over there. Let's go find out what that is. If I'm at the terminal, that, that actually strikes me as being probably what I'm looking for. Probably watch where I'm going instead of reading the chart while I'm taxing. Probably smart. Probably be smart. Okay. This is a P3D. You can tell because of uh, the uh, HDR effects that are in. What's uh, my frame rate right now? Anyway. Ugh. Okay. Well, that's not good. All right. There's Alpha. You know what? Screw it. Oh, I see what's happening here. Three, one. Oh, no, it's right after all. I envisioned it wrong. Okay, good deal. Uh, no, no, we're doing uh, we're doing a flight to we're flying to Venice. Check uh, check flight bot. Oh, prefer? Um, well, I'm probably going to prefer P3D eventually once I get used to it, but um, at the moment... Uh, oh, yes, it is. There you go, Tim. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, I, I lean toward FSX only because I'm used to it, so... Um, yeah, it's a little laggish. That's, uh, you know, streaming and doing things, so it's uh, fighting a lot more stuff. I still do need to upgrade my system. That's happening soon, hopefully. Uh, there we go. We found the runway. We found it. So yeah, we are going to Venice. We do have a flight plan. It's already loaded in. That's what you see down here on this uh, little nav display here. So this is very much uh, not very procedural oriented, though. We're uh, mainly just trying to get used to this aircraft. So be aware. I also don't have uh, I don't think I have any traffic turned on because I don't have uh, Ultimate Driver Two for this. So. It's just uh, it's just us in here, which is fine because I don't use HC anyway, so we won't tell the FAA. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. This thing turns uh, a bit more on a dime, uh, which is cool um, because it actually simulates correct nose gear steering as opposed to rudder steering, which almost every other FSX plane does. Um, so you're actually turning it from the front of the aircraft instead of, like, in the middle of the aircraft, which is kind of annoying when it comes to trying to steer correctly. Okay, landing lights coming on. And uh, strobe can be on now. Let's go back to the go back. checklist here. So lights and strobes. Ignition, that's fine. Flight time advised, there's no flight time today. Transponder, uh, that was down here somewhere actually. Don't remember where. But we don't have ATC, so I don't really care. We'll find that another time. <laughs> uh, let's see, a radar train, uh, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to lose any more frames. Alright, I think we're good. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase power to Toga. It's going to snap into climb. That's max power. There we go. Toga. And away we go. Yeah, the frames are a bit... Uh, once we get
get off the ground, it'll probably smooth out a little bit. Hopefully, because it's really bad. <laughs> Uh, 1,500 feet off the ground, we will uh, scale back to climb power. Actually, no, sorry, at 3,000 feet, I think is what happens. No, no, it is, it is. I think. Hit a pumpy runway, yeah. Alright, so we'll go back to climb now. Oops. There we go. And we'll level up a little bit to accelerate. Of course, that's due to the fact that I'm streaming and running my own stuff. So, what do you expect? Let's go flaps uh, to one. really reacts to uh, flaps coming up and down and power coming in and off because of the way it's oriented, so, which is really cool. It's realistic in that way. Alright, coming around. Let's get back on our, our flight plan here. Airplane's trying to be smarter than me. I don't like it. I don't like it! Yeah, well, I tried to do that uh, last weekend, and uh, the plane wouldn't work in multiplayer mode. It was, like, breaking every time. So I might try it again tomorrow, and, uh, and 
and see if that works, but uh, last week it did not work, so I had to abandon it. Oh my goodness, jeez. The lag is making it really difficult to fly this thing. It's really jerky. I think a lot of that has to do with the streaming software. Oh, good grief. Better it's the weather injection is screwing me up, because I didn't have that yesterday either. We're all gonna die. <laughs> We're all gonna die. This is awful. This is awful. Oh, hey, Krypton. Uh, the uh, the uh, CRJX doesn't have auto throttle at all, so there's that. Uh, which I'm aware of that. I'm trying to get the stupid lateral navigation to work, let alone the vertical now, as far as the altitude is concerned. I'm just wants to keep turning. But I think. We've got to be, we must be in like a, a nav mode as opposed to like a uh, FMS. Yeah, that's this. No, it is FMS 1. Well, it's the nav source. Let's this thing. Trim on this is just killing me. Jeez. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. Moose herd cat. <laughs> yeah, well, that's for sure. Right now, the it would be easier to deal with if I had uh, some autopilot assistance on the uh, lateral nav, but apparently I'm not going to get that. Yeah, it's using VOR stuff, I think, instead of the FMS plan, which I'm trying to figure out how to switch in flight, which is not very helpful, so, especially when I can't trim down. Go that way. Also, the jerkiness of this is just, oh, it's a killer. Okay, first of all, you. Please tell me that's not negative 20, though. I wouldn't think it is, but maybe it is. That's my first problem. Okay, that's zero. Okay, good. I think it would do that, but... No. Silence. Silence, I kill you. Thank you, Encrypted, by the way. I appreciate that very much.
Okay, that is now set. Let's see, where are we with regard to... We're going to push them behind us, so we want to do that and that. Oops. Just kind of hands off. Oh, you know what? That's probably why I'm having to execute it. I wasn't doing it every time. I'll bet that was my problem. Maybe. Let's get a straight before I assume that again and it turns me. It's a weird disruption. You saying, uh, Tim, are you saying the source needs to be on Nav 1? Or. Actually, that's a good point. I should just do that. Steady, steady, steady. Okay, stable. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know, and, and then I realized I wasn't uh, executing the flight plan after I did that, so uh, we're figuring it out. Okay, so now, nav source is in nav, uh, well, so now it's in VOR, so. Wait, come back here. Nav source off, VOR, FMS1. Okay, FMS1, that's what we want, bingo. So now, let's try this and see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll just switch back to heading mode. Why would you turn me that way? I'm on that, so there you go. Come on. Figure it out. Alright. I think... I think we might have finally got it sorted. I think. <laughs> Good grief. Oy vey. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my rate of climb here a little bit because I need to get my speed back. Or we will plummet out of the sky and that will be no good for anybody. Yeah, no, I did see that after I when I was messing with it, it changed over here to, uh, uh, to the VOR selector, so. But, yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and get, uh, now that I'm stable and everything is working, let's go ahead and get some team speak up. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guys. That's, uh, it's a weird day. It's a weird day. Not now. There we go. Okay, uh, connect, connect. Standing by. Connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and live stream. We'll go back to three because it looks like it's available. Channel switched. All right, uh, team speaks up. I'm in live stream room three. If you want to join. Ish ish. How's it going, man? So you sneezed on the mic. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you might want to watch where your uh, mic is in relation to your face. It looks like you're just kind of breathing into it very heavily, like Darth Vader. Because it was much smoother yesterday when I was doing it, but I didn't have Active Sky on here yet, so uh, that could be where a lot of the flag is coming from. Part of it's going to be the fact that I'm running OBS and streaming it to not the same computer, so um, I'm hoping it's more that than the weather, but either way, you get that It's control. snowing where I'm at right now. And you're at where? Montana. Oh, okay. 
Tim, how's it going? All day. Yeah, just uh, looking at the uh, Montana weather as well. I've got a place uh, by Big Sky, so I just saw the winter storm warnings going up last night. And I'm like, I think I'll stay in Chicago this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to warm up next week, though. It's really nice. At least it helps with all the fires around us. Yeah, there's been a lot of fires in this uh, part of the United States. Uh, we had uh, we had some interesting storm blew through here on uh, uh, Monday night. Uh, actually, like it, was, it felt like it was something from the Midwest. Thunder and lightning going off everywhere, and big old fat rain, which we needed. It was good because we needed the uh, the water as well for the fires that are up here in the mountains. But uh, it made for some interesting weather, that's for sure. Every time we needed the rain to put out the fires. The rain came with lightning, so it made more fires. It made more fires, yeah, that's that's a problem, too, so. Tim, you going to any football games this weekend? No, it's a bye week for Michigan State. We are off this weekend, but oh. uh, did a bunch of inter interesting flying this week, I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah? What, where, uh, where were you going? On Monday, did uh, Atlanta-St. Thomas, and on Tuesday, went down to... Turks and Caicos and San Juan and back, uh, all as uh, part of the recovery effort for the hurricane. Gotcha, well, that's cool. How are they doing down there thus far, can you tell? Well, I think St. Thomas is going to be off the grid for a while. Uh, they were they were hammered. Um, the Turks, too. Uh, San Juan's coming back uh, pretty good. Uh, we flew a bunch of TSA stuff down there for them. But, uh, it was interesting because they had us coming out of Detroit instead of uh, Atlanta because of the rain on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, okay. Hey guys, if any of you are in chat and are wondering uh, how to uh, uh, to get on TeamSpeak or to, to join the TeamSpeak, um, just uh, type in uh, exclamation point TeamSpeak into, uh, for Nightbot and he'll give you the, uh, the link to the instructions. So again, this is the Raptors TeamSpeak channel. So you got to follow that, those instructions and uh, to get in here and uh, join the conversation. But we'd love to have you. So it's not just restricted to those of you who already know it. It's uh, open to anybody who wants to come join. You do need a microphone because the whole point of TeamSpeak is that you chat, uh, like with your voice. <laughs> so uh, if you don't have a microphone, then just stay in the regular chat because that's all you're going to be able to do on TeamSpeak anyway. So. Well, hey there, bud. Hey, Encrypted. How's it going? I'm good. Fine. I'm going to shoot up my tablet, and then it's chilling. Oh, nice. Oh, goodness. Okay. How are you liking uh, P3? Uh, I do love it. It's it's very nice. Um, I do appreciate it more without the uh, massive frame rate hit, so I need to try this in something other than the CRJ and see if it's now. Because I just, like I said, I just got um, Active Sky on here today and GSX, which obviously didn't work long enough to actually be of any use. Um, but uh, all that just came in today, so I don't know if uh, there we go. There's the problem. Speed, speed bust. Um, I don't know if any of that is related to the. Um, actually, I just increase my speed. My speed here is related to that, or if it's the CRJ. Because, like I said, the CRJ even in FSX was extremely frame rate unfriendly, and uh, which was a little disappointing. I'm hoping to have a fun little aircraft to be able to do a bunch of uh, bunch of short hop stuff with, but if it's going to be like this, then until I upgrade my computer, it's not really going to be uh, flyable, because this is pretty painful at the moment. What's your FPS? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to look at the moment, and this is a cruise. It's, <laughs> it's uh, between uh, 6 and 10, which is awful. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you're also going on, what, PD3? This is P P3D, yeah. Yeah, it's, I kind of expect, and your computer's not fully upgraded yet, too, or it should be for P3, so well, I, I expect that. No, I, I, I don't, and here's why. Um, I actually was running P3D uh, in comparison to Steam earlier, and it was performing better than Steam. So, um, yeah. I mean, it can, it can take advantage of resources better than Steam can. So I, I don't expect it to be as bad. Now I think now part of it was you know in doing those tests uh, I wasn't running uh, OBS to stream and, and stuff like that and the weather engine wasn't installed yet. So 
So it may just be now that all that stuff is in here as well, plus a very frame-heavy aircraft that's just all coming to a head. So. Um, yeah, just looking at your uh, visual out there with the weather, uh, did you port over what you had on FSX as far as the active sky settings, or did you tweak them yet? Um, I tweaked them a little bit, and so I think I need to go and do some more tweaking and just make, make it fine-tune. I need to go and look at what I've actually got it set to in FSX. I was just trying to get this going so I could actually stream today since I didn't do it last night. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's definitely some more tweaking to do, but uh, the fact that we're actually doing it on P3D on the stream is uh, is progress. So that's good. <laughs> One step forward. Yeah, that's right. Hopefully, and hopefully not two steps back. Kazakvo, how's it going, man? Privet Tovarish, good to see you, sir. It's kind of sad he didn't do the walk around. I want to see what the exterior of the, the aircraft looked like up close. Oh, okay. Well, you uh, did you miss it? Because I did, I did do a kind of a quick scan around of it. Maybe unless you're referring to something more in depth than that. But when we get on the ground in uh, in Venice, I'll I'll do it more up close. It is yeah, a very you're also, sorry. Go you're ahead. also using a new uh, well, not uh, what do you call it? Where you move the camera around? Oh, a guy. new yeah, a new camera program. Yeah, um, Chase Plane. So yeah, so that, and that's you're trying to get used to that too is is, uh, is interesting. <laughs> I've got it set almost the same now to where I can switch back and forth with where when I'm used to an easy dock, but uh, it's still a little, got a little quirky differences here. Though. I was just trying to see where the frame rates were dying at. Yeah, I don't think it has to do with Chase Plane. Chase Plane doesn't, and e Easy Dock for that matter, doesn't really do a whole lot when it comes to uh, frame rate drops. I don't really suspect it's that. I was using Chase Plane with the uh, very complex uh, DC-6 uh, plane around that, and I wasn't noticing any severe frame issues, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, for those of you that are curious, TeamSpeak and Discord are, are essentially the same type of thing. It's a, it's a platform for, for doing voice chat. Um, uh, the quality, from what I understand, on TeamSpeak is better than Discord, and I've got access to Raptors TeamSpeak, so that's why I use that, so... Uh, TeamSpeak, it's free for you guys if you want to download the TeamSpeak client and, uh, and get in here and chat. Uh, you don't need to, to buy it. The only thing that you need to pay for is if you're going to host the TeamSpeak server, which you're not having to do. So um, if you do want to get in, in on this, uh, I welcome you to, to find out what it takes, get the uh, instructions and do that. Uh, if not, if you're happy staying in uh, regular chat, that's fine too. So whatever you want to do. My Cop opinion, well. I like Discord there. Okay. Discord actually, Discord has its perks so that you can see just a lot more in easily share images and other stuff with each other. But the drawbacks is you, you do that expansion of it, you lose the you lose quality in the vo in the voice due to that extra channels and everything, so on. Yeah, and see for me, the whole point of it is the voice. So if you're using vo if you're sacrificing voice quality to do fancy things that you can use other programs for, then I say what's the point. <laughs> Kyle, how's it going, man? Good to see you back. And I had some really good news. Uh, what is that? October 16th, I start my college classes. Oh, nice. Uh, where are you going to be going? I'm taking an online course for right now. So through Park University. Okay. And if it's just one class, and I'll, re, I'll be doing a transfer over to Bridgewater State University, Bridgewater State College of Massachusetts, for the summer, the spring summer. Is that okay. park out of St. Louis? Yeah, Missouri. Yeah, good school. Unfortunately, they were sure the school that had my program. They did. I mean, they stayed with them the whole time, but no. What aviation? Yep. Is that park? Did they drop program? They don't have one. They used to. They must have dropped it. <laughs> so that's why I want spring summer. I'm training for the Bridgewater State of Massachusetts. And due to their connections with JetBlue, I will be going through them for my full entire flight time career, getting a CFI and a bachelor's in aviation, aviation science with a flight instructor focus, allowing me to become a certified flight instructor by FAA regulations. So well, hopefully you won the lottery. 
I'm using, I'm, hey, the military's paying for it. Oh, that's even better, okay. <laughs> I'm, sa I'm saving my GI Bill for Bridgewater State. I'm using a T, I'm using the TA for this class, and, maybe, and the Navy's paying for the whole class. So I'm like, woohoo. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm in all in favor of that. Do they know if you're only, if you're close to your 18 years of age, if you don't mind serve, having me boss around, having a different whole lifestyle put into you, and so on and so forth, join the military. <laughs> Wait till you get to join Jet Blue. Oh, that'd be real fun. <laughs> uh, Kyle, to answer your question, I have played around P3D because uh, that's what we're in right now. This is uh, P3D V4. Apparently YouTube is still referring to this as FSX, which is kind of annoying, but uh, this is actually <laughs> P3D. Is there a way to put the uh, your position at the bottom of the nav display instead of being in the middle? Um, I don't know. Let's play around with that and see. Because, yeah, it is kind of annoying having it in the middle of the display. I'm not used to that. Um, yeah, pretty much things behind us don't bother us. Right, yeah, I don't really care what's immediately behind me. It's not going there. Uh, what is this? This is reference speeds, nav source, radar terrain overlay. Traffic display. Should be on the uh, left panel, panel one, underneath your. Uh, oh, jeez, what is that? The, the air thing. Right. Yeah, that's where I'm looking right now. The <laughs> under the air thing. Yeah, the the air vent. Yeah, I don't see. Since that's PSD mode, that's just going to change that. You know. Okay. Yeah, something yellow arc versus 360. Yeah. Map format, nav format, HSI. As far as it goes there, and that's going to take me to plan. TCAVs, flood radar. Nope. Yeah, that's interesting, but that's not, doesn't seem to be an option. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. It's annoying. I'll have to look into that in the manual somewhere and see if there's a uh, see if there's something about that. Unless someone on here that uh, has flown this already knows anything about it. I don't know if uh, Flight Sim Deck I think has flown this aircraft before. So you might know. Uh, Team Speak nickname. Uh, it, I think that's your nickname. You gotta. Um, you gotta pick your own nickname. <laughs> it's just basically so you show up in TeamSpeak as uh, whatever name you call yourself. That's all that is. Are we still dropping speak? Uh, question was um, regarding the nav display is there a way to put this into like arc mode as opposed to centered mode? Uh, so that we're not in the center of the nav display, we're like down here at the bottom like normal uh, Boeing aircraft. I'm not seeing a switch that allowed me to do that, so I don't know if that's possible. Uh, the server nickname, you gotta go into, um, you gotta get the, it's a, I don't know the, what the nickname is, but you do it by IP, and you gotta get that information from the Nightbot. Um, type in exclamation point TeamSpeak, and it will give you the link to where you find the information. What is happening? Where? Dude. Oh, holy crap. Holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. What in the name of this holy are you doing, aircraft? Back to flight plan. It's making a left turn, it wants to drive the NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the car comes to see our national hundred in the final lap. <laughs> Are you flying the Embarder house paint scheme? The what now? Em 
Barter has paint. What's it, Barter? No, Bombardi. You see the Bombardi. Oh, Bombardi. I thought you were saying, uh, like, trying to make up some funny name for Embraer at first. I was, what the heck? Yeah, no, this is, uh, no, it's, uh, Hop, which is uh, Air France's, like, uh, regional summer, I guess. Yeah, so, uh, we'll see you there, Hop. Yeah, well, we're hopping, all right, that's for sure. Yeah, left, right, up, turbulence. <laughs> exactly. Left, right, bounce. So flight sim deck's looking and seeing if he can see if it's possible. He's not sure it is. Uh, well, I don't have any advice regarding that because I don't have both of those platforms, Kyle. I only have P3D and uh, FSX. I don't have X-Plane. Um, I've seen X-Plane. It looks really nice. It looks really cool. Um, I mean, it's not really, I mean, it doesn't really have to be a hard, hard choice because the... Uh, the software itself isn't the expensive component, it's all the add-ons and stuff that you're going to want to do, so um, you can actually kind of make the choice <laughs> initially, and then uh, to some extent you'll probably have more options of add-on software, at least initially with, uh, with P3D, um, but who's to say what the long term is going to look like with regard to that, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a gamble in that sense. But at the end of the day, you gotta... I would I would just look around and see which sim looks like it uh, looks better to you. And if you've got any particular aircraft you got your eye on, make sure they're compatible for the sim you want to do. And if they're not, then go for the other sim. That would be my, my recommendation there. Coming up to Todd here, top of seven. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna leave the autopilot off for a moment. I'm just gonna hand fly the thing because apparently wants to be annoying. Not to add fuel to the fire, but does it? Uh, did the uh, sim come with a uh, working radar? It did, and it's off only because uh, I'm afraid the frame rates will drop further. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just curious. I, yeah. I, kind of, I wouldn't tell you to do that. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, no, I think, at least I believe it does. It's 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 mentioned here, and it shows... I'm, I'm just curious. Let's see what happens when I do that real quick, just to, for the sake of fun. Please. Yeah, so I mean, Kyle, if you're leaning one way or the other, I would just kind of go with the way you're leaning. I mean, it's uh, it's never too late to switch it if you get into it and decide, hey, you'd rather go the other way. I mean, yeah, it will cost you the difference of whatever the sim cost is, but if you don't get too heavy into add-ons in one sim platform or the other, then you can always uh, you can always switch to the other one. Or 
actually they do processor, but I also need the second computer to run the stream off of, so that way I don't have to tax this computer with that. That will help immensely. Yeah, so I got my, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this on the stream yet or not, but I got my first uh, uh, payment check from YouTube uh, this last week. Um, Was it five bucks? No, they, I mean, it's, uh, they won't pay you until you get a hundred bucks. Uh, you have to hit the hundred dollar really? threshold. Yeah, it just sits in your account until you do that. So, um, so I actually got it in the bank account, meaning I got, it was like 108, I think was when I finally got my bank all lined up. So some of that is uh, uh, some of that was donations from uh, Super Chat, and then some of that was uh, ad revenue. So a combination of two things there. So, but I uh, used that money to buy this this aircraft. So it's kind of cool. And then also uh, to buy the uh, uh, latest uh, P3D version of uh, Active Sky. So some, uh, some add-ons for the uh, for the sim. Thanks to uh, you guys to either your views or your donations, so I appreciate that. It's uh, very helpful. I'm a little disappointed in the frame rates that I'm getting from this aircraft that uh, I felt should it be at least on par with uh, PMTG frame rates at the worst, <laughs> but I don't know that Aerosoft knows how to optimize their uh, stuff for frames, I guess, at least not as well as, P as uh, PMTG does, apparently. Video card are you running? Uh, the video card is pretty nice. It's a G uh, NVIDIA GTX 970. Okay. The problem is FSX, and I think P3D... Well, P3D does a better job of this than FSX did, but FSX is very processor-heavy. The graphics card actually doesn't help you all that much after a certain point because it's doing most of its calculations and things with the processor. So, uh, the processor I've had on here for quite some time now, It's it's it was pretty good when I bought it, but, you know, by today's standards now, it's a little underpowered, but it's an AMD quad, uh, sorry, 6 core, 3.3 uh, gigahertz, overclock 3.9, but I think the bigger issue is some of its uh, front side bus stuff and things are a lot slower than, uh, than most, and so it's, uh, it's a looking fast on spec, but it ends up being a cheaper processor, so. Oh, okay. Flight Sim Dexo found images of the of an arc mode on here, so it, it does exist. It's a matter of finding out where it is. I'm thinking it's the outer ring in the format. Uh, well, that's uh, well, the format is the the inner ring is range, and the inner and the outer ring is format. The format I just I cycled through all of that, and I didn't get it. So, okay. unless there's another ring hidden in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, lower the ring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's hit set test. That's fancy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wonder where that sucker is. Because I flew the old version of the Aerosoft uh, CRJ for a bit. What oh. a piece of hunk that was. <laughs> Blue Crayon, how's it going, man? Welcome back to the stream. It's on the... do that. It's not going to be down here, right? It's all I can. Maybe about... Oh, that would be a problem. I'm going to bring it to the top of this anyway. Let's move on down. Okay, so if you look up where it says Nightbot, uh, follow this link for instructions on the TeamSpeak, that document will give you the IP address. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head because I don't know it off the top of my head. Now, plenty of Now we're level cruise now? Uh, well, now I'm starting to send. We uh, I still think that's what that says. It's top of the set. Yeah, it does. So I'm gonna start bringing it down. Because <coughs> it 
right. It's funny, Aerosoft does that. They put in little noises and page turns and coughing every so often just to make it feel like you're in here with somebody, I guess. Hey, I've got a friend of mine who just made Captain on CRJ, so I'll have to ask her. Yeah, find out where that stupid button is, because apparently it exists somewhere. Well, the option is somewhere. It may be an option that I have to set up in the, uh, in Dave. I nah, that. I don't think so. I think that would be a, a Bombardier thing. I don't think it'd be in the, the standalone. Well, I would think so, too, but, you know, it's Aerosoft. You never know how they modeled it. <laughs> well, the amount of time it was in development, that should be, uh, spot on. Well, it should be, but, yeah. All right, uh, Flights and Deck, uh, Patrick, thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you were able to join us for a little while. Good to see you again. Congrats on your 5,000 uh, subscribers. We'll see you around, man. Oh, you can leave us forever now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, play some season for the other man. Makes another thousand more. Thanks, man. It's like you suck. <laughs> So, did you see my little note I had to my little tip? Your little, wait, what now, who? See the super chat? I did see the super chat, but it, it looked like it just, like, said sorry for something or other. No, I said so good to get this. Oh, that's what you said? I, that's not what I saw. Yeah. I'm looking at it right so, now. It says sorry oh. getting that. <laughs> well, my tablet says it probably took it so put the sorry. Yeah, it probably auto-corrected you. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that makes much more sense now. I was like, I'm looking at it going... Uh, sorry, what? <laughs> Thanks for the two bucks, but what? <laughs> uh, Houston, uh, uh, Houston, the uh, tower, uh, tower, Houston, go, Houston. Uh, we have problems. What's wrong, uh, tower? T uh, Houston, the problem is we got a auto crack down here. Uh, sorry, we're gonna get that. Imagine the Apollo missions struggling with autocorrect trying to get to the moon. That would have been fun. Well, once I get it, I'm taking the jet, taking that uh, CRJ right to my training ground. Well, not training ground, my testing grounds. Yeah, hopefully, you get better frames on it than I'm getting. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. I mean, I have an Intel i7 and a 740 mic. What do you think okay. I'm gonna probably get? Oh, I don't know. I get my run. I run everything else pretty stinking well. This guy went in here in, in FSX with no OBS, no traffic. I mean, it was like dead on arrival. I was like, what the heck? So I don't know. It ran mucho times better on P3D until I you know, started using OBS. <laughs> how, mu how much of your fleet did you lose when you moved between FSX and P3D? Um, I haven't uh, I haven't parted over really anything yet except for. Um, Except for this, and so I'm gonna. I think it looks like I'll be able to keep um, some Captain Sim aircraft. Um, the this 747 should transfer over. Same with the 737. Well, no, because it's uh, it's actually the the PMDG ones. Uh, you have to get platform specific um, because it's licensing issues, and so it actually will not. I mean, there may be a way to hack it in, but I don't. I'm not aware of that save your dollars for that one. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the nice thing is I've got both sims on here, so I can go back and forth, and if I want to fly one, I'll fly that and that. And, and for, so for a while, it'll be a back and forth game until I, uh, until I make a permanent switch, but, like, I'm probably not going to be buying any more add-on updates for FSX at this point. Um, it'll just be, it'll just be nice if they work for both. That'd be great, but if they don't, I'm gonna aim it toward P3D. So. It looks like lightning in her eleven o'clock. Yes, well, a little bit my twelve o'clock occasionally too. It's like, but yeah. Now, does this also have vertical guidance for your profile descent, or are you pretty much on your own? I well, at the moment, I'm guessing, and uh, <laughs> but I have not seen it. Uh, when I was doing some of the research on this, I know it doesn't have auto throttle, and I was told 
the VNAV is very, very limited, especially when it comes to profile, profile stuff. So I don't think it does. I think you're kind of on your own to calculate your, like it'll tell you top of descent, but that's about it. Guess I'll put my wallet back in my pocket. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That'd be interesting to see if it matches crossing restrictions and things like that, but, uh, you know, yeah, you get familiar with the airplane before you start playing with that. Exactly, yeah, and that's, that'll, that'll be next. Right now, it's just about getting it back on the deck. <laughs> yeah, I watched the, uh, the one I missed because I was out of town and stuff, I was at 7 four going into Budapest. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you do have a tendency of, of losing the profile and the descent quite a bit. That's yeah. like going in high again. Yeah. Okay. the overspeed here. Uh, what do you mean you can't find it, uh, Quentin? Where, where are you? Where are you looking? I guess is the question. Because in the uh, in the Nightbot link, it gives you the IP address. It's up there near the top. So, but it's in that link. It's not like Nightbot's not going to tell you directly. It's you got to go follow the link the Nightbot gives you. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah, then it gives the PDF that you have to read. Yeah, <clears throat> and you don't need to read a ton of that to get going. But you know, just the top of it has the sentient details. Uh, the link, the, the one that Nightbot was giving you, like, I've told you many times, type in exclamation point team speak. Type that into chat. Or somebody else type it into chat for him so he can figure that out. <laughs> and then Nightbot will give you a, a little rundown on Follow this link to figure out how to use TeamSpeak. And you have to go to that link. There is just plays to get you back. There you go. Okay, so now it's it's up there. So let's follow this link for instruction to get on the team on the team speak as I get struck by lightning. Um, you gotta click on that link and that will take you to a document that will give you information including the IP address on how to get uh, get going on TeamSpeak. Well, the well, as I was talking, my cockpit was like lighting up with the uh, light from the lightning. It's getting real. Yeah, this this ain't good. <laughs> yeah, I know this is gonna be really fun. <laughs> Thunderstorms in the vicinity. You think? <laughs> We're all gonna die. Turn on the storm lighting and turn off the turbulence. Oh yeah, I've always been curious about that. So, what is the uh, the storm lighting? What exactly is that? What's the point? Uh, that turns everything up to bright, so you don't get dazzled by lights outside. Oh, I gotcha. Makes sense. Love the the lighting effect on the cockpit. It's a lot cooler in people to say that. It's nice to have that stupid green bar gone. Now, you had to get a new active sky for P3D, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, so it's uh, 2016 and it works for P3D V3 and V4. Which I don't have V3, okay. so it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, we still have to tear that apart then. Yeah. I should say you still have to tear it apart. So how you like the CRJ so far? Uh, well, the the uh, the aircraft itself is fun. It's uh, it's well, it's flyable anyway. Like I, I took it up and around and landed it last night real quick with good frame rates, and it was a lot of fun to fly actually. Um, when the frame rates suck, then it's you know, nothing's fun to fly when the frame rates suck. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're, we're you know, you turn into a slideshow at that point. Right. PowerPoint. <laughs> exactly. You're trying to react to stuff in, you know, weird time oddities. Yeah, you might want to get back to maneuvering speed. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Oh! Wow, okay. Ha! That sucks. <laughs> well, I don't know how far back you guys are delayed, but uh, that was the end of that. <laughs> that sucks. I guess Thunderstorm got you. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> Alright, well that's uh, that's unfortunate because, well, of course the landing probably wasn't going to be very spectacular anyway considering it was probably going to be a slideshow again, especially if that thunderstorm was over the top. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're still flying on the uh, stream here. Yeah, not for long. <laughs> not Oops, for long. there you go. There it is. <laughs> Got my wish for the external view for about 30 seconds. Yep. It's uh, it's loading back up here, back in uh, Budapest. So I'll give you an external, external walk around here in a second once it finishes loading. Did that die of a crash on the sim, or did the system crash? No, it was a aircraft overstress message I got. Okay, you did have the turbulence on then, didn't you? Yep. <laughs> First thing I turned off. Yep, I'm gonna have to do that. That's fun. Good grief. All right, Jenna Wolf, how's it going? So yeah, so all of you guys in uh, watching the stream, uh, apologies. That's uh, that's unfortunate. This is well, it takes a long time to load that back in, doesn't it? All right. What is going on there? You might want to turn down. Uh, while we're sitting here, you can turn down the uh, active sky, maybe. Yeah. Back the range and stuff. There get your frame rates better. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to do this for right now. Uh, weather. I'm going to go to clear skies and just do that and see if that uh, helps a little bit. And now, let's go to the outside. And I'll show you the, uh, the exterior here, Tim, so you can get a good look for it. How are you doing on your reading, by the way? I'm uh, coming along, coming along. I found actually a whole bunch of manuals. Uh, there's a site, uh, oh, now it's called, I think it's called mycockpit.org or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they have a whole bunch of stuff that people have uploaded all the time. So I did find, I actually found a 727 manual that looks like someone scanned in, um, which is uh, which is cool, too. So I'm going to dissect some of that as well. Someone with a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, yeah, because that's a lot of scanning. So... So you can see here a little the uh, outside of the aircraft. It's, it's actually very well modeled. It's a it's a very I mean it's you know small considering it's I mean it's CRJ so <laughs> but uh, it's very pretty. I'll give them that. Yeah, I got the uh, the Embraer is the small one, so 145. Mm -hmm. It came out ages ago. That's actually a fun airplane to fly, but but I mean it's an antique. Yeah. Uh, simulator wise. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's a nice, uh, it's a, it's definitely a nice looking, uh, nice looking aircraft. So it's, it's going to be about finding ways to get uh, better frames with it and uh, and see about. It. I had a, I did a a search somewhere, um, <clears throat> seeing if anyone was commenting about frame rates. And what I saw, everyone was saying really positive things. So I was like, okay, good. Then I got in here. And I'm like, what the heck are they talking about? So. I'm not sure if there's something else I need to be turning down or off or what, but yeah, it's interesting. So, but yeah, so yeah, but it's a nice looking aircraft. Uh, it flies, it flies very well for the most part. It is particular when it comes to uh, your flaps going down or your power settings going up and down because it does react to that based on the fact that the engine power is above the uh, center of gravity and in the back there. They did model that, so it's uh, makes it for makes for interesting and uh, and having to account for that, which when the autopilot's not behaving also makes that even more interesting <laughs> and difficult. So um, you have to talk to my CRJ driver. I don't I don't know what she's uh, she's 
feeding from the fire hose. She got hired two years ago at Sky West and is upgrading to captain in October on the CRJs. I'm like, you're kidding me. Holy moly. Wow, that's quick. I did hear that there were, in the regional stuff, there was some some chances to get to captain pretty quick because of some shortages or something. So they were doing a bunch of accelerated stuff with people trying to get... Well, well, at my employer, we had a guy get hired in January and made captain on the MD-80s, 88s out of LaGuardia. Um, wow. This month, I think. Good night. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, that's quick. Well, that also says that nobody wants the game. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, I mean, they're and they're phasing them out. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, goodness. Oof. <laughs> All right, well, unfortunately, um, I'm not going to do it all over again. So we're going to fly something normal tomorrow, and uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a normal life left seat uh, flight. I'll keep playing with the CRJ and try and get it more flight-worthy. I thought it would be fun to do a, a let's all learn it together thing, but it did not work so well. So, <laughs> oh, well, that's uh, nature of the beast. That's, okay. that's what we call a first impression flight, where we make an impression on uh, northern Italy. Exactly. We made a very, very good impression uh as far as deep parts of aircraft falling from the sky. Are the doors all open and everything, too? Uh, yeah, they do. Um, the I don't know how to open them. I can open the main door uh, with the keyboard. I don't know how to open the other ones without being in Dave. So I'll open... Let me. Go, let me there's that guy, and then I'll go in here and... Uh, actually, oops, I've got to turn that off. Let me go... Doors. Open, open... A service door opens too. I didn't try that one earlier. Uh, control shift six. So now you got the uh, the belly door there for the cargo, the uh, the rear cargo door there, and I believe the service door over here should now be open as well. Yep. You can actually see through the see through the plane there. I wonder what happened to the uh, ground handling. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that one because it was working fine and. Uh, and then it all of a sudden just vanished on me. So I don't know. I'm guessing something crashed, and it didn't tell me it crashed, which is kind of annoying because then I don't know. But uh, actually, I'm curious now if I set the brake, if it'll. Whoops. So yeah, see there now it's now it's active. So I could do that now if I do. Uh, if I do that. Let's see here. Come on. Yeah, because you can almost be eyeball to eyeball with Juan in the CRJ. Yeah, exactly. So that's a big tug for for a CRJ. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's that guy, and then it loads in the uh, the baggage guy over here too. Since they don't need any belt loaders for this, obviously. So. So yeah. Well, that's uh, that's all she wrote. So I'm gonna play with the weather a little bit and see if I can't get that uh, dialed in better, because I think that might be part of my problem. Uh, what's my frames right now? Yeah, so the frames right now are floating close to 15 to 20, which is, that's what I was getting yesterday with uh, <clears throat> with no OBS, so um, that could be mainly the weather, weather injection. Yeah, it looked like the weather, problem. and as soon as I saw the, the thunderstorms with the high precip, that's going to kill your frame rates, too. Right, yeah, that yeah, that'll that only hurt it. But I mean even out of even out of Budapest it was relatively clear and it was still really, really low frames, so I don't know if it's the weather engine that's killing a lot of it or what, but Well it depends on what your cloud ranges are and things like that too. That that's a good point. That is a good point. So I'll have to look at that and see what those are set to and because I was I was like marveling at, at how good your weather looked, and I'm like, well, you got a haze layer going there, and you got the clouds going, and I'm like, yeah, there's the frame rates. Yeah, that's true. In fact, yeah, that's a good point. The haze layer is probably uh, providing a little bit of that too. So, yep, yep, yep. So, all right, well, we'll try this again tomorrow with uh, with the uh, normal normal stuff, and uh, that way we can get a regular flight in for the week. And I'll continue to play with this, and we'll go from there. So. Yeah. So, see, so you got the shadows turned down too. Oh yes, that's true. That's gonna that's gonna kill. But I thought I'd turn that off in P3D. Apparently not. All right. Yep. So yeah, I've got some more tweaking to do. Apparently. <laughs> well, what time tomorrow, there, kid? Uh, I'm gonna try and do it earlier uh, than obviously today. I'm gonna try and do it before noon Pacific. So probably 10 or 11. This is gonna be my goal. Um, I gotta help the guy move furniture in, in the evening. So I don't want to be bumping up against that. So that'll be the plan. So we'll we'll see what happens. So. And then, uh, and then go back to my uh, football for Sunday. So, 
All right, for those of you that are still with us, it was uh, it was uh, fun and uh, horrifying all at the same time. <laughs> and uh, we'll do this better tomorrow. We'll do it more normally tomorrow. Thanks to uh, Tim, as always, and uh, Ishius for coming along in the, in the chat as well as Encrypted on the TeamSpeak. Uh, good luck to you, sir, with the uh, school starting here uh, soon for you. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a good rest of the day. We'll hopefully see you tomorrow on Saturday morning in Pacific time and whatever that equates to whatever time zone you are in in your life. All right. Have a good night. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Have a good one, guys.